remember this picture? February 2011, two-time human champions of Game Jeopardy playing with a supercomputer called Watson and developed by IBM. Ken Jennings on the left, Brad Rudder on the right, and in case you haven't guessed, Watson in the middle. <laughs> well, Watson beat the two-time human champions at the game Jeopardy. There were other times where they had computers and machines beating human champions. As early as 1997, chess champions were beaten by supercomputer. And more recently, there's a complex board game called Go that machines beat the champions of that game as well. So when machines started to win at these complex human games, some people started to ask the question, are machines getting as intelligent and as smart as people? Are machines that are even getting smarter than people? Are we all getting replaced by machines and our jobs are being taken away? So I am here to tell you and give you three major observations that why it is about time that we move away from these comparisons of machines versus humans and move toward the idea of humans with machines. You see, the idea here is not to race against machines. The idea is to use machines and work with machines so that we elevate performance and enhance desired outcomes. So, observation number one, uh, working with machines, humans can increase their flexibility in their work arrangements. How many of you would like to have a very flexible work schedule? <laughs> How many of you would like to be able to work wherever you want rather than go to a specific desk and a specific place to work? Okay. <laughs> How many of you would like to pick your projects that you work on? How many of you would like to pick your customers that you work with? <laughs> if you gave a yes to any of those, check these out. These are digital markets for freelancing. Some of these are looking at a specific area of service. You all have heard of Uber, have used Uber. Some of those focus on a wider range of professional services, and some of them are really focused on niche and expertise. By the way, if you're also interested in generating additional income, check these out because of the tremendous flexibility that they provide. You can work part-time or full-time. You set your own schedule. You pick your projects. You advertise your services, and you set your charging mechanism, hourly, weekly, monthly, or fixed cost. Now, flexibility in work arrangements are really important because some people like to have the option of generating additional income. Some people would like to be able to balance commitments to work and a career with commitments to family and community. Next way where technology can really help us. Humans can team up with machines and collaborate with machines to elevate performance and outcomes of work. 
This is particularly useful when humans have, as human beings, of course, we have physical and cognitive limitations. This is teaming up with machines is particularly useful when we try to compensate or get around human cognitive and physical limitations. How long does it take you to read a 2,000 page technical book? How much of what you read you can recall precisely six months later? How long does it take you to keep focused and pay attention to reading a book before you get distracted, tired, or bored. Machines, on the other hand, they can consume thousands and thousands of pages of text per second. And they're going to recall everything precisely forever. So limitations in cognitive and physical abilities of humans can negatively impact their performance. Let me give you an example. There are estimates that up to 20%, up to 20% of medical diagnoses are either wrong or incomplete. So as you can see, some of these errors can be very costly and very dangerous at times. Let me tell you why and how this happens. The amount of medical information that is available nowadays is vast. And this amount of medical information is increasing at a very fast rate on a daily basis. There are estimates that about 8,000 Research papers are published on a daily basis. So think about it. It's humanly impossible to keep all that information and all the changes to that information in one's head as a physician. Now think about a scenario where the physician is faced with a very complicated case with a very long and complicated history of a patient and is working under time pressure. It is very likely that he or she may not remember a particular piece of information, medical information. It's likely that he or she may not recall a specific item of information from the patient's history. It is likely that he or she might not have had an opportunity to figure out the very latest research fi finding about that particular case. And all of those could lead to misdiagnosis or an incomplete diagnosis. Now think about a different scenario where the physician has a machine where the machine has all the knowledge and information, medical information. The machine has the complete history of the patient and all the other similar cases. The machine has all the symptoms that are expressed by the patient. Based on all of that information, the machine can come up and make suggestions on a number of diagnoses to the physician. And the physician, based on his or her judgment, can pick one, an entirely different scenario. So teaming up and working with machines can, in fact, enhance performance. Now, I want to give you another example, teaming up with machines and collaborating in, uh, with machines that can really bring about new ideas and innovative solutions. You know, nowadays, you're all about innovation, right? And perhaps the best way of demonstrating that is through an example, a simple but interesting example. Uh, a number of uh, chefs started to feed Watson, the same computer that uh, played Jeopardy. They started feeding Watson with thousands and thousands of recipes, ingredients, and various combinations of food flavor. 
So uh, using that information, analyzing that information, when someone would give Watson a food category and a main ingredient, let's say dessert and chocolate, Watson would come up with a new recipe, a new dessert recipe that had chocolate as the main ingredient, but it would also have all kinds of new uh, ingredients and new flavors. Now, you don't have to worry about Watson taking over your kitchens yet, although I wish it would <laughs> over, take over <laughs> my kitchen. But Watson and the chefs, they have collaborated, and they came up with this uh, recipe book. You can purchase this on Amazon. Another way that machines can work with humans is we can learn with machines. There is so much and so many online courses, training videos, searchable online information available globally. These are some sources where you can get some of the available online courses free. In addition to these, all universities, most of them in the US, have free online courses. And these courses cover subjects from A to Z just about. The last item on the list is called Course Benefit. That really is a catalog, an organized catalog of all various courses that are offered by about 250 universities in the US. A good source to go to. Also, machines can play the role of a tireless, always available, and very patient tutor with students. For example, they can give helpful hint when the human learner gets stuck on solving a problem, or they can explain and answer questions, and based on the student's performance on a, an exam or a quiz, they can actually provide explanations. Again, there are lots of intelligent tutors for a variety of subjects, math, uh, physics, computer science, chemistry, etc. Now, as more and more people get online and start learning online, we are collecting data that could be later analyzed so that we can design even more personalized learning support systems for people. So, in conclusion, I have identified three ways for you increase flexibility of your work arrangements by going into these digital freelance markets for additional income or just by flexibility in the work arrangements. I have suggested that you can team up with computers instead of racing against machines so that the performance is elevated and the desired outcomes are enhanced. And I have suggested ways that we can work with machines to learn. You see, machines are consistent and tireless and seemingly have limitless information processing and memory capacity. On the other hand, humans have cognitive flexibility. They are self-aware and they are emotionally intelligent. What an amazing combination human with machines makes. Thank you.